this is the second lecture on the HOS model and based on the assumptions we were able to predict the outcome in terms of foreign trade and that is which country will export what and import what. Now this model also has very rich implications and that is what we'll examine now. What we have assumed in this model is that US is capital abundant and clothing requires capital intensive technology and hence we know US will export clothing. India on the other hand is labor abundant and we know food requires labor intensive technology and hence India will export food and based on this we came up with the formal statement of the HOS model. So once again a country will export the product whose production requires the intensive use of the nation's relatively abundant and cheap factor and for the US this abundant factor is capital and which commodity requires intensive use of this factor it is clothing and hence US will export clothing. By similar reasoning India will export food and then this country will import the commodities whose production requires the intensive use of the nation's relatively scarce and expensive factor. For the US the relatively expensive or scarce factor is labor and hence US will import food because food is produced using labor intensive technology and what will India import? It will be clothing. Why? Because capital is relatively scarce in India. Thus based on the assumptions we have made we have already established that in autarky there will be a difference in relative prices between the US and India and this we know becomes the basis for trade and as long as we can find world prices which lie between these two autarky prices world trade will take place or international trade will take place and <clears throat> since the relative price of clothing in the US is lower in autarky US will be exporting clothing why because in the world market the relative price of clothing is higher for the US and hence it will export clothing what about food from the US perspective it is relatively cheaper for the US to import food and hence they will import food what about India India will import clothing and export food based on these prices in the previous lecture video based on the assumptions we what we did is we compared US and India in autarky with respect to these variables and we know LO stands for lower HI stands for higher and these in red letters in red indicate comparison of US and India in autarky and just as an example PC by PF in autarky in the US will be lower relative to India or in India it will be higher. Now when these countries start to engage in foreign trade what they face is a world price which lies between these two autarky prices in the US and India and once they engage in international trade these world prices are accepted by the Americans as well as Indians the consumers as well as the producers in each of the two countries. So how does international trade compare relative to autarky in each of these two countries? Let's just write that down. Now the relative price of clothing in the world is greater from the US perspective and hence with international trade for the US PC by PF will become higher and what about India? For India it will become lower. What about consumption of clothing by food? Since US will produce 
more clothing but it will export a lot uh, uh, export clothing to india the chances are that this would become lower for the us and this will become higher for india what about production of clothing divided by food because of higher relative price of clothing what will happen is the production of clothing divided by food will increase in the us or will become higher in the us what will happen in case of india it will produce lower amount of clothing and higher amount of food and so this ratio will become lower now we know in order to produce more clothing you require more capital rather than workers so in the us with the international trade demand for capital divided by labor will become higher what about india it will become lower now an interesting part of all this is what happens to wages divided by rent we know in autarky since labor is scarce in the us wages divided by rent were much higher in the us relative to india now us starts to export clothing and when it starts to export clothing what happens the demand for capital increases and when demand curve for anything increases what will happen to the price of that product it will increase so the rent on capital in the us will increase and what will happen to demand for labor in the us because now us is producing less of labor intensive technology and more of capital intensive technology what will happen to the wages of workers in the us they would start to fall and so with international trade what we would expect is this would become lower for the us what about india wages were lower in india and rent was higher in india in autarky when india starts to produce more and more food primarily for export production what will happen the demand for labor will increase and when demand for labor increases wages will go up or wage rate will go up what will happen to rent in india it will start to fall or in other words this will become higher this ratio with international trade relative to autarky so this in a way gives us implications when these two countries start to engage in foreign trade relative to autarky based on our discussion in the last slide what we figured out is with international trade wage rate divided by rent will become lower for the us with international trade and how can w by r become lower for the us one wages must have become lower with international trade and two rents must have become higher with international trade and we know <clears throat> for the us capital is the abundant factor and what is the price of capital it is small r and labor is the scarce factor and what is the price of labor it is small w or wage rate so based on this observation we have the next theorem and this is called the stolper samuelson theorem and this is what it states we already know this free international trade benefits the abundant factor for the us it is capital and you can see the rent will increase for capital and free international trade harms the scarce factor the scarce factor for the us is labor and hence wages will fall and so it in a way harms the scarce factor and this is the statement of stolper samuelson theorem for india it will just be the reverse now let us just continue our discussion what happens to factor returns when these countries engage in foreign trade now let us just go back to the autarky situation we know in autarky 
since labor is scarce in the US wages are higher in the US in autarky and lower in India now once these countries start to engage in international trade what will happen is based on stolper samuelson theorem wages will start to fall in the US and will start to increase in India and this will go on happening till wages become the same in the two countries i have shown this for wages you can argue in a similar way for rent and so here is the state next famous theorem it's called the factor price equalization theorem and what this states is given all the assumptions of the hos model free trade will result in international equalization of individual factor prices of homogeneous goods and which are individual factor price so wages will become the same with international trade with international trade and rent will also become the same with international trade as long as we have the same kind of workforce and the same kind of machines in the two countries so this again is a very rich implication of hos model and this is called the factor price equalization theorem let us look at the third theorem associated with the hos model and this is called the rivzinski theorem let me just read what the states and then i'll explain this at constant world prices if a country experiences an increase in the supply of one factor it will produce more of the product intensive in that factor and less of the other one for example if you suppose we are looking at the us and we know in the us labor is scarce and we also know food requires labor intensive technology suppose in the case of us we permit say a lot of migrants to the us so now if the population of the us is 300 million let's assume we just double that population of people living in the us by simply permitting migration now when we have more workers in this country what will happen to wages they will fall and when wages fall it will become attractive for the us to go ahead and produce the good that requires intensive use of this factor which is labor so us will start producing more and more food so this is the statement of rizinski theorem if there's an increase in supply of one factor it will produce more of the product intensive in that factor and less of the other and this concludes our discussion of implications of the hos model so thank you for your time